Hey, good morning. So listen, this is for all my friends who own dogs. And this is especially if you have a rescue dog or if you have a puppy. Let's see if I can set this up here. So every morning when Gra Grayson, can you come here? Gray Gray. Oh, he's tired out. Every morning when we go out for a walk, we come in. Let me show you. Okay. We come in the door and Grayson stands here and I take off his harness and he goes and lays down somewhere in this little area where he is now, if he wants to be on the cooler floor or on the carpet, if he wants to be warmer. Now, we've been practicing walking by people without having to pull and get to them and without having to jump on them. <laughs> and the walking by people is working pretty well. Uh, learning not to jump on people, sometimes it's a little bit, that one's gonna take a while. But here's what I wanted to say, okay? Some people think that their dog just, you know, maybe is not listening, is stubborn, is dumb, <laughs> something like that. And, you know, sometimes it almost appears like maybe your dog is thinking, now, I'm just going to not listen and she'll be none the wiser and she'll think that I'm just stupid and can't learn this. Uh-uh. With repetition, your dog can learn just about anything. But that's the key, repetition. Okay, like this dog who appears lazy and all. Now, if I give him something to interest him, Grayson, okay, not interested. Now, let's go into the room with the treats. Actually, this is just his normal kibble in here. I'll grab a few pieces. Aha, uh -huh. oh, we're standing up because we know there's something interesting. Okay, Grayson, touch. Come on, touch. Oh, let me put this down. Sorry. Okay, plain hand. Touch. Yes, because we learned. Here you go. Good boy. We learned how to touch back in dog training. Let me turn this around. Okay, where's my camera stand? Here it is. Okay, I'll see if I can give you a little view of some of the things that he'll do for a treat. Okay, touch. Good boy, Gray Gray. What a good boy. Okay, now how about this one? Okay, down. Front feet down, back end down. Good boy, stand. Yes, good fella. Good fella. Here. Here, take your toy. Uh, see, he's hoping for more treats. Now, let me tell you, when I first got him, he was so interested in everything else, it was even hard to interest him in treats. It's like his interest in the world, because I think he was locked up before I got him, like for a year and a half or so. Um, his interest in the world was greater than his interest in food. He could take or leave his food, but he wanted to see what is that thing blowing along the street, you know, like a dry leaf, or, oh my gosh, look at that thing running, a squirrel or a cat. And, you know, he just wanted to investigate. Now that he's gotten used to seeing a lot of stuff, he's more interested, you're more interested in getting a treat now and in getting attention, aren't you? So there is gonna be something that interests your dog, okay? Here, let me put this where you can see both of us. All right, there's something that interests every dog 
just like there is something that interests every person here. I put some more lights on. And, you know, with a lot of dog, it's going to be treats. Um, honestly, if I had gotten something really stinky and ooky, like, I don't know, raw meat or some smelly cheese, that might have interested him. I didn't want to deal with that. But anyway, the more time he spent with me, the more we have gotten into a routine. Just like when we come in from outside, he knows we stand there so I can take his harness off, take it off, I hang it on the doorknob, he goes and he lays down like I said, on the floor to keep cool or on the carpet if he wants to be a little warmer, don't you? And he's learned also that I'm a hugger. Yeah. And now I'll tell you this, okay? This might help you put into perspective how long it can take to get a dog into a routine, okay? You're not just dealing with, I don't know, uh, some short-lived lab rat type situation, okay? Um, he was a rescue dog, so he came with baggage, so to speak. And I had him six or seven months before he himself would come and lay down next to me and put his head on me. You know, a lot of dogs will just do that, especially if you have them from a puppy and you're affectionate with them. It took him that long. Now, like if I'm sitting on the floor especially, he'll come and just lay his whole body up against me. He likes being by me, but it took, you know, seven or eight months for that to happen because not only did we try to have a routine with me, you know, routinely giving him affection, but also every dog has a different personality, right? So you, you're working with kind of an unknown there. You don't know, um, you know, is your dog very excitable? Is he sort of ADD, <laughs> short attention span? Um, maybe he's afraid, you know, and it looks like he's excited, but he may actually be afraid and insecure. You don't know what you're working with, but if you keep following the same routine, eventually the dog will fall into the routine with you. Now, here's the thing, and this is, this is the real important thing about this. You know, I'm training him not to jump up on people. If I don't feel that I can control this 70 pound dog when we're out walking, and sometimes I, you know, I want to take it a little easier. Um, and sometimes I'm feeling strong and ready to meet the challenge. But if I don't feel like I can deal with that, I don't let him near other people. I walk the other direction, okay? Also, I've trained him that if I say, nope, nope, that means we're not going there. Like he sees a squirrel or a cat and I'm saying, nope, and pulling him in a different direction. He knows we're not going there. Sometimes he'll try to pull. Most of the time he knows, uh-uh, not gonna happen, so I'm not even gonna try. You know, which is really good. I really, I appreciate it that you're smart and that, that you're teachable. Um, <laughs> but in order to train him to not jump up on people, we have to practice with people, you know? So I have a few friends in my area who, you know, I'll say, is it okay if we walk by, but we're not going to let him jump up, you know, and they're prepared and we'll just walk by. And then sometimes we'll go in front of them and we'll sit, well, he will sit. And if he tries to jump up, they'll turn their head away and they won't give him attention. And so I have people helping to train him that, you know, dogs want to be the center of attention. They do. So if they turn their head away or turn their body away or put their, hand, their arms, you know, fold their arms, they're not going to pet him. 
then he tends to want to behave more so he can get back into the center of attention and have them pet him and everything. So this is the important thing. If I sometimes let him jump up and other times I don't, what I'm teaching him is, eh, you know, one or the other, there, there's no rule here, kind of, he can do what he wants or, or he can try and maybe I'll let him jump up this time. So if you're going to train your dog, pick something that you can be consistent with. The more consistent you are, the more rapidly he or she will learn. But, you know, keep in mind that every dog is different. Every dog has a different degree of intelligence. Um, also a different degree of stubbornness, <laughs> just like people do. And different things that interest them and engage them. And, you know, they also have, just like we do, a limited attention span. Um, what is it, you know, with people in a lecture, they say that the, the mind can only take in what the bottom will endure or something like that. In other words, when you get tired of sitting, you, <laughs> your brain shuts off. You're not really gonna be hearing anymore, you know, what the lecture person is saying. So same thing with your doggy, you know, one, if your dog is getting tired out with the training, if you can tell that he's starting to lose interest, well, it's time to do a little playing, you know, and, and take a rest with the training. So yeah, keep in mind, you've got an intelligent to one degree or another creature. If you've got a puppy, then that puppy is, you know, changing every day. And the thing is though, just like with people, you know, as a health coach, I'm always talking to people about developing healthy habits to where something becomes second nature and you don't always have to be making decisions. Well, do the same thing for your dog. Help your dog to learn healthy habits, uh, healthy for you, so you're not aggravated, where the dog knows, just like Grayson knows, when we walk in, we stand still for the harness to come off, and then we lay down. Um, also, when I'm getting him his food in the morning, you know, he might kind of waggle around a bit and seem excited, but he doesn't try to get the food until I tell him, take it. Some things are gonna come easy, some are gonna take more effort, but it all depends on you and being consistent. You know, not just with your dog, with yourself. Okay, have a good day.